So let's get started. Uh, welcome to our first ever Electric Car Insights, your local dealership roundtable. I am Mark Scribner, Program Manager, Electric Vehicles with Energy New England, and my team supports the local public utility EV programs, Concord Drives Electric and Wellesley Drives Electric. And I'm joined today by our EV marketing specialist, Alex Bonat, who will be running the presentations and the technical side of things. Our EV special support specialist, Ray Stedkevich, who will uh, present about various upcoming EV models, and Kayla Tavares, EV specialist, who will moderate the Q&A session. Uh, but today for our main event, we're going to hear directly from representatives of our local auto dealers who are selling the prominent brands and models of plug-in electric vehicles available now. We'll hear from some local EV driver uh, enthusiasts, uh, owners, and EV specialists with more information about incentives and charging. And we'll wrap it up with some live Q&A from the attendees. And feel free to submit your questions at any time. You can do that either through the comments section on YouTube, or you can send us an email to ev at ene.org at any time during the presentation, and we'll get to all of your questions at the end. So let's get started right away with our first presenter to talk about the exciting lineup of BMW plug-in electric vehicles. Uh, which are high performance vehicles, but they also actually have something for just about any lifestyle or budget, including a uh, good selection of used vehicles. Uh, and so we have Pranav Gill, who is the general manager of Herb Chambers BMW nearby in Sudbury. And uh, with him is Mark Lamans, product specialist, Dan Johnson, who is a senior product and marketing specialist, and also Charlie Carcatetis. I apologize if I got the name wrong. Uh, senior client advisor, and uh, I'll turn it over to you, Pranav. Well, thanks for having us, Mark. Um, we're very excited to speak to the community about some of our hybrid and electric vehicle offerings. Um, we'll have Charlie start with just a quick uh, model lineup as far as the different models available, and maybe Dan can expand a little bit further on each model with EV range and price points. So Charlie, if you don't mind, uh, please take us through the model lineup. Absolutely happy to. So uh, very exciting lineup for BMW with the plug-in hybrids. Uh, we offer three sedans uh, and thankfully for our area, they're all wheel drive. So we have a 330E, which is the three series sedan. We have the 530E, which is the bigger five series and then our flagship, which is the 745 uh, e and those again all available with X Drive all wheel drive. Uh, in our SUV range, we have an X3 30E, and then we have our X5 45E, um, and then we still have our tried and true uh, i3 electric uh, hatchback. Thanks, Charlie. Dan, if you don't mind uh, taking us through some of the price points on these models as well as the electric range and uh, Mark, I know the i3 is your uh, constant favorite, so we'll have you speak about the i3 a little bit. So with the X3, I mean, not too much. I mean, it's slightly um, larger uh, price increase over like the X-Drive 30i, which is the regular uh, gas-powered model. It starts at around 45,000, so a little bit of a price increase over there, not too drastic. Um, only about 17 miles of electric range, total range 340. 288 horsepower, which is, you know, it's a nice bump over uh, the standard gas model at 248. Um, so that's some people, the more performance minded uh, customers uh, enjoy that. And that, that really applies to all the PHEV models as well. Um, and the X5, very, very similar to the X3 in terms of what I just said. And it's a little bit of a price increase, but you will notice the range is about twice as much. The X5 runs on a 24 kilowatt hour battery, whereas the models that have 30E in the name run on a 12 kilowatt hour battery. Um, so that's going to yield about half the range since we have about half the battery power. Um, and 389 horsepower, and also has 443 foot pounds of torque, which is over 100 more foot pounds of torque than the regular 40i gas model. So another uh, performance boost there. Uh, 330E, kind of uh, similar, just a little bit more than a 330i, uh, similar range to the X3, and uh, as this is pure electric, total range a little less, maybe smaller, slightly smaller uh, fuel tank, 
and same horsepower since the same drivetrain. Uh, 530E is just about the same as the 330E. They share the uh, drivetrain. They have slightly more uh, range on the 530E with a larger fuel tank. Uh, 745E, um, about the same, uh, even the range as the X3 and the 5 Series. Um, so that, even though that's a 45E, that still has the 12 kilowatt hour battery. Uh, packaging doesn't let the uh, 24 kilowatt hour battery to fit in the back of the 745. So you can have the lesser uh, electric range. Um, and then, uh, you know, same power output as the X5, of course. Very yeah. cool. So um, Mark is our resident i3 expert, not only a longtime BMW um, tenured employee, but also an owner and uh, consistent driver of several i3s. Thank you. Yes, uh, I actually started the i3 program and was one of the original active V participants as well when the BMW 2 Series at the time 1 Series was converted. And all of the electrical components that basically became part of the i3 were tested. So we had a 1 Series BMW that had the same motor and the same battery pack, uh, which went into the first i3 in 2014, which had a 22 kilowatt battery pack. In 2017, that got upgraded to 33 kilowatts. And then for 2018, we now have a, excuse me, 2019, we now have a 42 kilowatt battery pack. And so you can really go over 150 miles in all electric. With the range extender option, you basically have unlimited driving because you give yourself a built-in, we'll call it just uh, emergency range of another 60 to 70 miles, depending on how you're driving. And so the i3 is a vehicle that you really still can use every day, go on even longer trips, and never worry about ever getting stranded somewhere. The range extender gives you the ability, if it's a, a longer drive, to just plan a little bit ahead or just drive without worrying about where you have to stop. And of course, now that there are so many additional charging stations in the area, uh, and with the increase of the number of level three DC fast charging stations, uh, you can really get that car back up to a full charge in a short period of time. And even for, for example, our pre-owned vehicles, our 16s and 17s that we have, those are priced under 25,000 and give you just an incredible alternative to something brand new that's 30, 40, 50,000 that you would be a little bit limited on. So. Yeah, huge i3 fan and love to answer any additional questions that the community may have. And if I may add, it drives like a BMW. Yes, <laughs> one of the fastest vehicles, zero to 30, yeah. zero, to, zero to 30 miles per hour that BMW makes. So uh, that takes you across our lineup of uh, current hybrid and electric vehicle offerings. We do have some cool future uh, models that will be coming out as well. Uh, we have the i4, which is gonna be the first ever electric Grand Coupe that's expected to launch sometime in late 2021. We also have the iNext, uh, which is gonna be a highly automated and fully connected um, BMW electric model. That's launching uh, roughly, again, estimated sometime in 2022. And the Vision Next, which is gonna be an all electric uh, new BMW supercar, which is probably looking closer to 2023 uh, from current communications from BMW. So reach out to the team. We welcome uh, test drives. We can offer um, dis uh, socially distant test drives at your home, office, or here at BMW of Sudbury. We look forward to answering any additional questions. Thank you. Great, thank you, Pranav. That was a, that was a fantastic presentation. And uh, yes, please, please add your questions about the, the BMW models uh, into the, uh, the chat in YouTube, which is available. Or if you prefer, uh, you can send an email to ev at ene.org, and we'll answer those questions in the Q&A portion at the end. See, you're perfectly on time. Uh, and next, we, we're going to hear from Guy Bedeau, who is a LEAF ambassador with Milford Nissan. And he's going to tell us about the Nissan LEAF. And correct me if I'm wrong, Guy, if I'm not sure if it still holds the title, but for many years, the LEAF has been the world's best-selling all electric vehicle. So take uh, it away. Thank you. Hi, Mark. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Guy Bedeau. I'm the senior leaf specialist at 
mill for Nissan. I, I have been um, for the past eight years. Um, so I've seen every generation of the LEAF as it's uh, continued to be updated and developed. Um, I do believe that the LEAF still is technically the number one uh, most produced car on the planet. I, I, to give Tesla credit in that way, I think Tesla's um, pretty much right there with us at this point. Um, and uh, I want to give Tesla, again, credit to help make the whole EV space be uh, recognized. I think the, the LEAF certainly was. The LEAF was the first uh, mass-produced, mass-market, uh, everyday, pure electric car designed from the ground up as an electric car, as a BEV, battery electric vehicle. Um, but Tesla certainly is, has done a lot to popularize it, make EVs, you know, be known to be very forward-thinking and, and even, you know, uh, quite desirable. Um, but uh, I've been fortunate, again, to, to see all the generations. I was trained back in 2012 when it was a 24 kilowatt battery, uh, the first generation car with the, the rounded nose and the rounded tail. Um, and so it was that generation held till 2016 when we got the next generation battery uh, bumped up from 24 to 30 kilowatt. Then in 2018, they released the new body style, um, completely updated inside and out, um, and introduced the 40 kilowatt battery. So that was EPA uh, 150 mile range. And um, now in 20, first in 2019, and uh, updated yet again for 2020 is the LEAF Plus. So that's rated up to 226 miles EPA and um, uh, is uh, been quite successful for us. So the LEAF is a uh, hatchback, five person hatchback. It's a, considered a compact uh, because of the footprint, but it's really quite a spacious compact inside. Um, for example, I'm six foot, 240 pounds. You could clone me three times and um, you know, I can set up the driver's seat for me to be comfortable as a driver. I can then go sit in the passenger seat and my knees do not touch the front seat. If I clone myself next to me, we wouldn't rub elbows, we wouldn't rub shoulders, I've got headroom. Um, rear seat split fold down as you would expect most hatchbacks would do. Um, so one of the leaf strengths is once you get past or, or once you include the, the fuel, good or bad, whether it's gasoline or you know, diesel or electric, now it's a car sitting in your driveway and it's got to do what you need a car to do. Um, and the LEAF has been quite successful because it's a real car. It has uh, really the best quality control and reliability of any Nissan. Um, there are features that we take for granted in regular cars that um, some of the electric cars, other manufacturers, perhaps not have not quite caught up on or, or don't seem quite as important. But um, that's one of the things that people tell me they like about the car is they sit in it, the dash is laid out well, they can tell where the controls are. It feels, you know, the seats are very comfortable. Um, they're supportive, um, excellent visibility. Um, just, you know, a practical everyday car. Um, let's see. So, I mean, Milford Nissan is is just off of 495, um, and we do specialize in pre-owned leaves. So we have one of the advantages of the leaf having been out so long in various generations is that they're pre-owned as well as brand new ones. Uh, the presentation that we're all looking at reflects the brand new 2020 cars. Um, there are five different versions in production. There's the standard range base S car. The SV steps up, um, adds standard features like uh, built-in navigation, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, 17-inch um, alloy wheels, um, intelligent cruise control, so that when you're using the cruise control, the car can sense the car ahead of you and will slow you down to maintain a safe buffer, uh, those sorts of features. You can add heated seats, heated steering wheel, uh, heated outside mirrors, um, and then jump all the way up to the longest range, the plus version, um, again, 215 to 225 miles EPA range. And loaded, it would have 
heated leather seats, Bose premium sound, um, LED daytime running lights, um, that sort of thing. But even the base car, even the least expensive car, which I've, I've got some pricing information on the screen here, includes features that I think everybody would find useful. For example, the blind spot indicator, a blind spot collision warning, uh, forward emergency braking with pedestrian detection. Um, new in 2020, there's now rear intelligent emergency braking with the, the sonar detection. So you have the audible feedback as well as the large rear view monitor camera system. Um, we've added the airbags um, to help prevent from, uh, you know, the worst case uh, frontal collision where you tend to submarine under your seat belts. Um, we've added the knee airbags and then the rear side airbags to provide that lateral torso protection for the passengers in the back. Um, power, I actually, I, my personal car, which is getting on 13 years old now, is actually a, a little BMW Sport Coupe. The basic Leaf S40 has more torque than my three liter BMW. Uh, it's, it's quite remarkable. And then the plus is even more than that. So I'm a car guy, that's why I'm in the industry. Um, although the fact that Nissan was the only manufacturer making uh, you know, mass, mass produced um, uh, everyday battery electric cars was also why I joined the Nissan brand. Um, but one of the things people really remark on, on, on all EVs, but certainly with the LEAF is how quiet it is, how quick it is, um, how, they really connect to the car. You know, most of us are used to driving automatic transmissions. I drive a, a six-speed manual in my in my coupe. Um, and the most enjoyable car I find of, of all the cars that Nissan makes to drive in is the Leaf because you're really connected to the car. There's no transmission, right? It's a direct drive from the motor to the wheels. Um, I was showing a gentleman today, I turned the car on I turned the heater motor off and he said, why'd you turn the car off? And I said, no, it's still on. There's just nothing moving. So um, that, that's really something that's very appealing, especially when you know, our day-to-day -day lives are oftentimes very busy, very highly scheduled, and it's nice to have a car where we can turn it on, super reliable, um, it gets us where it's going uh, with, you know, minimum of stress, really, really adding to the enjoyment of driving. Um, I could say more about the, the pricing right now. Um, Nissan's definitely making a push, but I'll let the slide pretty much speak for itself for now. But I certainly welcome um, any and all questions about the car. Um, quick little preview for what's coming. I was uh, one of two people in the United States flown by Nissan corporate to uh, Japanese global headquarters in Yokohama over the winter to sit in the first Aria. Uh, it'll be a 2021 car um, coming out next summer. It'll be our first pure battery electric um, all-wheel drive crossover. So basically the size of a Nissan Rogue or CRV, Honda CRV, uh, Toyota RAV4 sort of size, but with the inside interior of the next size up. Um, it's made in the, it'll be made in the Infinity plant. Um, it looks like an Infinity. It has the design ethos and, uh, you know, um, advanced um, ergonomics and interior layout that you'd expect from the Infinity quality level. Um, and I didn't get a chance to drive it. They only had one in existence. So the fact that we were able to sit in it was uh, sit in it and see it um, was, was quite special. So um, we'll have more cars in the, uh, we have more cars in development uh, coming down the pipeline as well. So I look forward to, uh, again, any questions uh, and the Q and A section afterwards. Thanks so much. Thank you, Guy. And I believe you have a special test drive program where people can yeah. test drive the, the vehicle for a longer period. Would you yes, want to just say a few you. words about that? Thank you. Yes, we do have a uh, an overnight no loaner, so that's free. I've had people take it out for one or two nights even, and the notion there is to really be able to live with the pure electric car, take it to work, you know, really give it a 
a trial run of what it would be like to go EV and to see, uh, you know, if the LEAF uh, has the qualities that you're looking for in your car. It's completely free. Um, it does happen to be the top of the line SL Plus. Uh, it's the car that I get to drive when no one else uh, has it scheduled. Um, and that's something, I think there's only three dealers in uh, the entire Northeast USA that um, we're fortunate enough to get one of these loaner cars. And, and we are one of them because we are actually the number two rated dealer in the Northeast of the United States. And I happen to be the rated as the number one LEAF specialist in the Northeast. So, so that's something that, uh, that helps people, um, you know, it's, it's reassuring to know that you're talking to somebody who knows what they're knows the car and knows the programs um, because there's, you know, in like in other areas, there's, there's certainly misinformation or uh, um, partial, partial truth out there. Sometimes people have to wade through to see if getting an electric car is good for them. So I think we're all, we're all good to help with that. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Guy. Really appreciate you joining us, joining us today. Certainly. Uh, and, and so now we're gonna move on to talk about the uh, offerings from Toyota. And, uh, and including the Toyota Prius Prime, which is one of the most efficient vehicles available, whether it's running on electricity or in its hybrid mode. And exciting that they just launched the much anticipated all wheel drive RAV4 Prime compact SUV. And we have Garrett Green, who is a certified EV sales specialist and a longtime Prius and plug-in Prius owner. Uh, I think, you are you on your fourth or fifth Prius now, Garrett? I'm on my fifth now. Fifth, okay. <laughs> I thought it was something like that. And, and so we're, we're lucky to have him here to tell us all about the Toyota Prius Prime and the RAV4 Prime and Acton Toyota. Thank you, Garrett. You're welcome, Mark. Yeah, Toyota, Toyota has 10 hybrids, two of which are plug-in uh, rechargeable hybrids, the Prius Prime and also the RAV4 Prime. The Prius Prime is been out uh, as a plug-in since 2012. Uh, was referred to as a plug-in up until 2016 when they came up with the name Prime to designate the plug-in capability. Uh, the When that's fully charged, they advertise it with a range of 25 miles. In the wintertime, 25, 26, 27 is probably more realistic in the summertime. 30 to 35 is what it says. Uh, I can usually do 35 to 40, driving it uh, conservatively. The RAV4 Prime, which just came out a couple of months ago, has been an enormous success for Toyota. And the currently we've sold, I think we've delivered four or five of them so far. We have a order bank right now of 26 and we're still taking orders, but we do have to advise customers. It could be March, April, uh, maybe even May before they see the vehicle in the flesh. Uh, Toyota is aware of the demand for the vehicle. They're building everything they can for us. So uh, I'm sure at some point the production will increase. The Prius Prime uh, uses a uh, it's got a 53 kilowatt battery. The, the RAV4 uses a uh, 134 kilowatt, and that has a range of 42 miles. And uh, I haven't had a chance to drive one yet, but those that have driven it say the car is an absolute rocket ship, and it does the 42 miles easily. Uh, the uh, you know, Toyota is one that started the hybrid. Uh, the hybrid uh, craze in the U.S. with the Prius. Um, the, I don't know that we have any plans for a full electric vehicle. I know that they're focusing a lot on the new Mirai hydrogen powered. But the it's amazing how customers have latched onto, as you all can see, with your electric vehicles, how they've become mainstream. And people are people are looking for them. They're insisting on the uh, plug-ins and, uh, and the hybrids in general. 
the there are more and more charging stations around. Uh, the you know the you know the uh, Prius Prime is rated at 133 miles per gallon E, uh, which depending on what you use, my commute's 15 and a half miles round trip, and I get gas, you know, every two or three months. The uh, the, right now, the incentives on the Toyotas are very strong. We've got the uh, we've got forty five hundred dollar federal uh, tax credit on the uh, on the on the Prius and seventy five hundred on the Rav Four Prime. The state is kicking in fifteen hundred dollars rebate on both of those models, and the Toyota Motor Sales right now is 4,500 on the uh, Prius Prime. So, I mean, that's $10,500 on the uh, Prius and uh, $9,000 on the, on, the, on the RAV. So those are some pretty strong incentives. Uh, you know, the, the electric batteries, as you all know, are now 10 years, 100,000 miles. So that's taken a lot of the, uh, a lot of the stress off the folks that are nervous or apprehensive about the technology. And with Toyota's, with Toyota's reputation for quality and durability, uh, it, makes, it makes selling the cars a lot easier. It's just a matter of coming up with the uh, enough product to, to satisfy the demand. Uh, I don't, you know, I, Prius Primes, we have those in stock. That's not a problem, but we're more than happy to take orders on the RAV4 Prime, but the customers just have to have a little bit of patience. Uh, it's good to see that kind of a demand for it. Uh, I don't know, any- Garrett, Garrett, you do have, a, I think you do have charging stations there on site too at Acton Toyota in just over the border in Littleton, is that right? We can charge, right, it's a public charging station. We can do four cars at a time. Uh, most of the day they're charged up with them, uh, tied up with employees charging their cars. We have a lot of employees that have uh, have plug-in, um, pl the pr plug-in primes, uh, RAV4s, uh, not the RAVs, the Prius primes. Uh, very, very popular amongst the employees. Great. Did and you have get, any final final thoughts you wanted to share with us? Uh, not that I can think of at the moment, Mark. All right, great, great. So we'll have time for Q and A. Uh, if you can stick around, uh, I'm sure there'll be lots of questions uh, about uh, these vehicles as well. So yep. uh, thank thank you, Garrett, for joining us. You're welcome, Mark. Next up, we're gonna hear about the Hyundai line of vehicles and Hyundai has innovated with EVs in two exciting ways. Uh, like, like BMW, which has done a great job as well, they're offering a variety of good performing plug-in models and style choices. Uh, but also like Toyota, they've really emphasized efficiency in, in the engineering of their cars. And I'm pleased that, to have joining us today, Jonathan Buck uh, with a local dealership, uh, Mirac Automotive Group. And he is the general manager there, and he's going to talk about uh, these three vehicles right here, the Kona, Ionic, and Ionic plug-in hybrid. Thanks for joining us, Jonathan. Um, you might need to unmute. We might need to unmute you. Thanks, Mark. Uh, yeah, so we, we have a couple of stores right over in Arlington, so not exactly in your backyard but not uh, not too far away. Um, one of them is a, a Hyundai store, and actually of the two, uh, that's the one that we're freshest into the EV market. We also have a Chevrolet store, so not quite as uh, long as the Leaf has been out, but uh, have been selling bolts for almost four years now. And we're very excited to see uh, Hyundai really get involved all the way across the, um, the green vehicle spectrum um, from 
the regular Ionic hybrid to the Ionic plug-in to the Ionic EV and then their longest range and newest EV, the Kona EV. Uh, so they really have made a dedication to that. And in fact, they're going to be rebranding the Ionic brand as strictly a green vehicle brand with uh, plans for a dozen different green vehicles, uh, all marketed under that Ionic. So the Kona EV will become the Ionic 5 and it'll be similar. And, you know, the BMW will they'll basically have a model one through one through nine. And then they'll have a couple of offshoots on that as well. And then their premium uh, brand. Uh, Genesis, which we also carry, uh, their first electric vehicle, which will be a midsize SUV, is due about this time next year. And they are one of the companies that's now committed to going 100% electric, which we're also excited about. Um, the Ionic plug-in, again, is, is kind of your entry into the Hyundai family of green vehicles. Um, no worries about range anxiety or uh, long charging times or really even having to find a charger. Uh, once you exhaust the 29 miles of all electric, you can go another 600 miles on the uh, gasoline backup engine. So it has a full hybrid backup system that will continue to charge the electric motor, keep that vehicle going uh, for as long as you need. Uh, the Ionic EV, uh, which I believe was just passed with the most recent update from the Model 3, but prior to that was the most uh, efficient vehicle uh, in the country. Uh, that'll give you, you know, just about 170 miles of all electric range, um, gives you about 134, 135 horsepower, and it's a 100 kilowatt system. Uh, it's the same exact size and shape as the Ionic Hybrid and plug-in hybrid. Uh, obviously, the one main difference other than the all electric aspect is it's got the solid front end since it doesn't need uh, the natural air flow to cool down the non-existing radiator and uh, combustion engine. Uh, and then on top of that, you've got the Kona EV, which is their long range offering. I'll give you up to 258 miles of all electric range. Um, it has uh, the most space. It's a small SUV size against same body as the Kona EV. Um, crossover utility vehicle, again, just with a solid front, uh, and that'll give you 201 horsepower and a, is a 150 kilowatt uh, battery engine. Nice to see uh, the the entire Hyundai family uh, dive in with both feet. Uh, the son of the founder uh, recently took over last week uh, the global brand, and he was instrumental not only in the creation of the Genesis uh, luxury brand, but also in uh, making EVs, uh, you know, a top priority for Hyundai's plans for the future. Uh, they also own the Kia brand. We don't carry Kia, but uh, the Nero EV and their exciting line of uh, EVs are also under the Hyundai umbrella. And uh, we're really excited to see what the what the future holds. Uh, we've got three different uh, EV specialists at our, our Hyundai store. Uh, like I said, we do have a Chevy store right next door and we have four EV specialists there. And as a group, we've really committed to this. We have uh, 10 charging stations, including a DC fast charge station that's available to our clients, whether they're in for service or just happen to be uh, in the area. That's all cost free. So uh, no worries about having to have a specific type of charge card or anything like that. And that's all powered by our 1600 uh, panel, 540 kilowatt uh, solar array. So our, our entire 60 bay service center is is blanketed in uh, solar panels. It's over a million dollar investment for the corporation, and we're really really proud of it, and really dedicated to continuing to serve this area for all automotive needs, but specifically for electric vehicle and green vehicle needs long into the future. Thank you, Jonathan. And. Um... Next up for the, the second part of our, our event today, we're gonna hear from some EV specialists who are also electric vehicle owners uh, to talk about the uh, Chevy electric vehicles, the Bolt EV and the Tesla models, and also some other upcoming brands. Uh, to kick it off, we have our own EV specialist, Alex Bonat, who is gonna talk about the Chevy Bolt EV which he has been a driver of for over a year now. Is that right, Alex? 
that is correct, Mark. Sorry, I just had to get all my mutes and videos going. Yeah. Um, yeah, That'd so, sorry, Mark. Um, so everyone, thanks. Good evening. Uh, my name is Alex Panat. I'm an EV specialist for, for our EV programs. Um, and I have been, ba I just hit my year mark for, for, as a Chevy Bolt driver. And, uh, last year when I applied for my Bolt, the tax credit was 1500 and now the, the, this, this following year is now to 2500 for the Bolt EV. So Bolt EV has a has 259 miles of range it has a it's very very peppy car with 204 horsepower kind of zero to 16 six and a half seconds and um in in the state of massachusetts it can be found for prices as low as 22897 if you go through the uh, dry uh, energy consumers alliance their drive green deals and if you have questions about that or need help looking for a bolt um, please feel free to reach out to us in our um, EV specialist line at ev and e and we'd be happy to help. Um, the Bolt is front-wheel drive. It's very spacious on, on an inside. I used to be a Prius driver and then moved to a Bolt and uh, for for environmental reasons. And the, the, the performance of the Bolt sort of was the, the wonderful benefit. And uh, it has some great trunk space, great great turning radius um, it is a front wheel drive and it has really good handling most most electric vehicles have great handling because the the battery is sort of situated between the front and back wheels so the the weight of the car is 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 very low to the ground and very centered and so i have i have gone through a new england winter with my bolt and have had no no issues with it tires were great the front wheel drive was great and if because of I've had the only issue is that I spin out a little bit if I floor it or press too hard on the accelerator because there's so few moving parts uh, when you when you hit that accelerator that the car um, will, will will jump off the line. Um, the 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 Bolt has um, a level two charger or it comes with a level one plug where you can just plug it into a regular household plug with 120 volts um, charging and that short sort of charges at five miles an hour or you can charge it at a level two system, which charges it for about 30 miles an hour. And, uh, or, and if you go to a level three, uh, it charges up to 50 kilowatt hours or kilowatts um, in an hour. And that takes about 45 minutes to get 90, 90 miles on the car. Um, it is the battery size of the Bolt is about 65 kilowatts, kilowatt hours. And so that sort of is, the that is why the current 2020 model of the bolt has a 259 mile range um, the bolt i have is 238 um, so the battery is a little smaller and the the newest model they upgraded a little bit um and yeah i think if there are any other questions happy to happy to answer them and um i think that that sort of does it um and now we can send it back to mark hey alex yeah, Alex. I was wondering, do you, uh, what's, what's 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 coming up new with uh, with GM or Chevy electric vehicles? What what's coming in the future? We do know that there will be the Bolt EUV, so it's going to be a, a sort of a Bolt EV that that'll be a sort of larger size. Um, we're expecting an all-wheel drive system uh, with sort of the similar similar build to it, and uh, GM is also eventually planning to get the GM truck EV truck. Um, is sort of the next next two models that we're looking at. So the Bolt EUV, which will have more space, similar to if you were to um, upgrade a Prius to a Prius V, um, the Bolt EUV will have more trunk space, be a little larger, and have a little more of a cross SUV feel. And then the GM truck, everyone's waiting a bated, be be uh, bated breath to see what the GM electric truck could look like. Great. Thank, Thank you, Alex. Alex. Thank you. Uh, it's a great preview of the Chevy Bolt EV. And now I'm very pleased to introduce Brian Folds, who is a Concord resident and Tesla owner. And he's going to tell us about the exciting lineup of Tesla models uh, that are available. Great. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm a local resident. So um, I my knowledge of Tesla's current lineup of products is, is basically scouring their website. So I hope I uh, do it justice. Um, but they offer three, uh, four different vehicles currently, the, the, the Model S, the Model 3, the Model X, and Model Y. And two of them are sedans, two of them are, are SUVs or crossover, I'm not sure which one you'd put them into. 
Um, and generally, uh, Tesla tends to be a more expensive brand, uh, but they also offer uh, quite a distance. Uh, the ranges on these vehicles, uh, I think the base model, Model 3, is the only one with a range under 300 miles. Um, so most of this lineup uh, offers uh, plenty of range, and they offer the supercharger network, uh, which back when I bought my Model S, uh, there were eight supercharging locations in the world. Uh, now we have over a thousand locations uh, to go to throughout the U.S. Uh, with about eight stalls per location. So um, it's very easy to find um, charging unless you live in, in Fremont, California, where there's so many Teslas, they have to keep making more superchargers in that area. Um, but yeah, so I um, I made a little table here of, of their model lineup. Um, the only real wheel drive vehicle is that base model, uh, model uh, three. The other models all come in dual motor, which is an all wheel drive uh, configuration. Uh, they offer um, in the sedans, it's five passenger seating. Uh, in the Model X, you can get a uh, five, six or seven seat configuration. Uh, for moving uh, quite a lot of people. And the Model Y is currently offers five seats, uh, but the Model Y will offer two more um, in 2021. So uh, you'll be able to get a seven seat version of the Model uh, Y in the future. And um, I want to talk a little bit about kind of the ecosystem of Tesla. The superchargers are one big component, but then there's also the uh, the mobile service. So when, you, when they can fix something on site, they'll come to your house and do the repair there instead of having you drive into the dealership. Uh, they'll also, um, they have features such as autopilot. Uh, this is the autopilot and uh, is more of a lane keep assist and where it, it does the cruise control and keeps you in the lane uh, and it will do emergency braking. And that comes on all of their vehicles. Uh, but then there's the upgrade of full self-driving. Uh, this is where you can get the car to come to find you in a parking lot and it'll drive itself over, or it will uh, navigate on an auto autopilot, will allow you to do, go from one interstate to the other without um, engaging the vehicle or just supervising it. Um, and, and other features, um, you know, parking assist, uh, it'll, it'll identify stoplights and uh, stop for the stoplights and things. So uh, there's those features, and that is a that's a eight thousand dollar upgrade. So it's not cheap, uh, but if you're into that kind of technology, it's it's fun, uh, but it's not for everyone, and that's why it's an option. And uh, generally, uh, if if Tesla offers something as an option, it's a it's a pretty heavy price for that option. It's you know a lot of stuff comes standard in these vehicles um, that is considered luxury or options in other vehicles. So. If they've added it there, it's it's going to add to the price in the end. But they're a lot of fun. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about um, some of the products they have coming up. They have the Cybertruck. Uh, if you want to pick up a truck that looks like it's from uh, Robocop, uh, you know, if you're into that, that's it's going to be a monster vehicle. Um, and then they're going to have the Roadster, which is going to be a very expensive but very fast I think zero to 60 in, in 1.9, uh, it's, it's faster than gravity. It's crazy. It's got tri-motor, uh, which they're also going to offer on the Model S. That means that instead of having two motors, it has three, two at the rear wheels and one in the front. Uh, and then there's the, the Semi, which is going to be a fleet vehicle. Um, they have a lot of technology built into the app that's on your phone. Um, so you can do request service through your phone. You can... Um, track just about everything to do with your car uh, possible through that app, and um, yeah, it's it's been a it's been a great vehicle. I've I've had my Model S now for a little over seven years, and people had you know strong concerns about battery degradation, and um, I bought the car with a, a 265 miles of range, and today it has about 248 miles of range. So about a, it's 93% of what it was on day one, uh, which is not specific to Tesla. Many of the vehicles here today will have that same characteristic going forward. 
Um, and I know that battery degradation is some people's concern, same with range anxiety. Um, and many of these early adopter concerns have been conquered by the market. Um, so a lot of these vehicles, uh, not just Tesla, um, are much better than they were uh, five years ago as offerings to be a, a practical solution. So um, I'll leave the rest for Q&A. Uh, oh, one other thing, um, Teslas have sold so many that they no longer qualify for the federal tax credit. Um, so you won't get those in this, on these vehicles. And the Massachusetts um, More EV program has a cap uh, on the price you pay for the vehicle. So only that standard range uh, Model 3, I believe, is the only one that will qualify for that, that state incentive. So I'll hand it back to you, Mark. Great. That's a nice segue to the presentation after the next one, where we will be talking in-depth in uh, coverage about the uh, incentives for the vehicles and what qualifies for what and so forth. So thank you, Brian. That was a very, very interesting about the different Tesla models and what's coming in the future. So uh, joining us next, we have our, our own EV specialist, Ray Stetkevich, uh, and he is going to be talking about the other EV brands and models that are coming soon. Uh, and uh, Next, we should have a next slide for that. Great, thank you. Uh, thank you, Ray. Thank you, Mark. Um, as Mark said, I'm Ray Setkevich. I'm an EV specialist for Concord and Wellesley, and I'm gonna go over the wide range of other EVs that are available. Now, most auto manufacturers have at least one plug-in vehicle or will be launching a new model soon. Several other EVs not mentioned earlier are worth your consideration as you contemplate adopting cleaner transportation. On this slide, we can see examples of the different models that are available now or will be soon. We're gonna work around this slide like a clock. The first up is a Subaru. And they have a crossover plug-in hybrid named the Crosstrek. It provides 17 miles of all electric range and 480 total vehicle miles. Next is Audi. They're currently offering their all electric, all wheel drive e-tron shown here with 222 miles of electric range. Next is Volvo and Volvo has been working on their plug-in hybrid line and they're calling it their recharge brand. It's currently rolling out that includes two SUVs, the XC90, the XC60, two sedans, the S90 and S60, and their station wagon, the V60. They all have around 22 miles of all electric range and provide about 500 total vehicle miles. And also pictured here, they have their all electric XC40. And it's due out soon and it's been rated at 208 miles of all electric range. The next one is Chrysler, who offers their Pacifica minivan. It's a plug-in hybrid with a 32-mile all-electric range and 520 total vehicle miles. Next, we have Ford. And Ford has just introduced their all-new Mustang Mach-E, which is pictured here. It has an all-electric range of around 300 miles, and it can now be pre-ordered and is due out later this year. They also sell two plug-in hybrids, the Fusion, which provides 26 miles of all electric range and 610 total vehicle miles, and the Escape, which has 37 miles of all electric range and 530 total vehicle miles. Although the Escape is a new model and has been delayed until next year. Ford will also be electrifying their F-150 pickup in the next year or so. And there are also other electric pickups on the horizon. Next is Jaguar. They currently offer their luxury crossover, the I-Pace. It has an all electric range of 234 miles. And last on this slide, we have VW. They're rolling out a completely new lineup of all electric vehicles. And the ID4, which we have pictured here, should be available for test drives and pre-ordering shortly in December. Initial range on the ID4 is estimated to be around 250 miles. Now, since plug-in vehicles have been around for about 10 years, the used EV market is starting to develop. 
many low mileage plug-in vehicles are starting to show up on pre-owned auto lots. Of course, our EV specialists are always available to discuss any of the models highlighted today, the ones that I've highlighted, the ones that the dealers have highlighted, and to speak about those that might be on the horizon. We're always available as a resource to you. Thanks. Thank you, Ray. That was a great uh, overview of uh, some other vehicles that are available and, and, and some, some models and brands that are coming soon. And uh, we've already, we're, we're going to uh, now hear from Tom O'Neill from this is Center, for, Center for Sustainable Energy, who runs the More EV, which is the program, which is the state rebate. We've already had some questions come in asking about the tax credits and the state incentives, and we're going to cover those. And also the, the local incentives that are for charging, we're also going to talk about that. So uh, we're really pleased to have Tom joining us. Thank you, Tom. Great. Thanks, Mark. So there are many financial incentives that you can provide to your customers to help reduce the cost barriers associated with transitioning to an electric vehicle. The state, through the More EV program, offers rebates of $2,500 for battery electric and fuel cell vehicles and a $1,500 rebate for any plug-in hybrid with an electric range of at least 25 miles or greater. However, like it was mentioned before, the final purchase price cannot exceed $50,000, so this does limit some of the more expensive models. And all of the currently eligible vehicles can be found on the More EV website. And there are plenty of other programs, such as those offered by DriveGreen in the Drive Electric programs, which can be applied to eligible EVs to stack incentives further, helping to drive down the cost. If you go to the Drive Green website, you can see that they have calculated out the price of a vehicle with these additional incentives, giving you a good idea of what the cost will be. Then the next slide. And as many of you already know, the federal government has been offering a tax credit for several years now, and this tax credit can be up to $7,500 depending on the make and model of the vehicle. However, the tax credit works on a declining scale tiered by the total number of sales. So the most widely adopted EVs have reached their limit, but there are still many models at this full incentive level. And the US Department of Energy hosts a website that clearly shows what each vehicle is eligible for. So it's a good idea to stay up to date on this and just know what your vehicles are eligible for. And it should be important to note to your customers that the federal tax credit is a tax credit applied for on their annual tax returns and that the more EV rebate is a rebate that needs to be applied for separately. And this is do done shortly after the purchase or lease. There are also many other rebates offered by a variety of vehicles and customer types, such as military and student incentives, and those offered by dealerships and, o and OEMs, such as the Nissan and Toyota cashback offers. But some of these are expiring soon on November 2nd. And next slide. And stackable incentives can be applied to any currently eligible vehicle to help further reduce the cost of pur purchasing or leasing an EV to one of your customers. However, additional incentives cannot be used to make a vehicle that is not currently eligible eligible, so they can't reduce that final pur purchase price below 50000 And this helps to increase the value of the rebate by making eligible vehicles more accessible to lower and moderate income families and the availability of an incentive has been shown to be a really influential factor in a car buyer's decision. And this can go a long way with helping somebody transition to an electric vehicle. And just important to note that any incentives should be clearly shown on the final sales or lease contract. And this just helps our rebate processing staff uh, process applications in a timely manner. And next slide. And additionally, there are other incentives available to help customers with the other requirements of being an EV owner, primarily charging. Additionally, More EV has recently added a fleets component to the rebate program, uh, and this is mostly to help commercial and nonprofit fleets electrify. Um, and this application is, process is coming soon, but we are accepting a waiting list currently. Um, and so it's helpful to know about charging incentives in your local area. Um, as these fleets decide to electrify their fleets and any customers that are looking to install a home charger. Um, additionally, if someone has access to workplace charging, they are much more likely to purchase or lease an EV themselves. And while many of us are currently working from home, this is most likely won't be this most likely won't last forever, and there's still a growing interest in these EVs. And as you can see on screen, both Concord and Wellesley Municipal Light Plans offer programs to help support the adoption of EVs, such as a rebate for a charger installation and a monthly credit for charging during off-peak hours. Uh, understanding the difference 
the different incentives relating to electric vehicles and how they can be stacked to provide the most value to, to your customers can really show them that you understand the needs and demands of EV ownership. And with that, I'll hand it back over to you, Mark. Thanks. Great, thank you, Tom. And if anyone on the call is already an electric vehicle driver or they're about to become one and they wanna learn more about any of the incentives that Concord and Wellesley are offering, uh, you can email us at ev at e and e.org and we're happy to explain these. Or you can visit the web, the ConcordDrivesElectric.org website or the Wellesley Drives Electric website, which you can find from the light plant page. Uh, or you can we can send that to you if you email us. And we're happy to go over the different incentives that are available for charging and uh, charging equipment. And uh, we did have a question come in. There will be a copy of these slides uh, will be posted on YouTube live and they're available upon request as well. So we are now going to move into the uh, live Q&A portion of our event. And we have EV specialist Kayla Tavares, who is going to be moderating the Q&A, and we also have some questions that were submitted in advance. And I think we're going to start with uh, start with one of our advanced questions. So uh, take it away, Kayla. Hi. All right. Thank you, Mark. Uh, so one of the first advanced questions that we have is been submitted, was submitted by Sherman, and he asks, "How far will electric cars be able to travel in, in the near future?" So I don't know if maybe Ray wants to answer that, or. Someone? Sorry, I was on. I was on mute. Yeah, sure. Uh, thanks, Sherman, for your question. Really, it, it comes down to uh, the cost of batteries for electric cars uh, and where we are with them. Automakers can build a 500-mile electric car, but it's just too expensive. We do currently have some 300-mile EVs that are reasonably price competitive, and also some very affordable 500-mile plug-in hybrids. As all the automakers enter the EV market though, we should continue to see incremental increases in range and affordability from the current levels that we see now. All right, thanks Ray. So uh, Alex, do we have any live questions from the YouTube comments that you wanna address? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we will, how about we start with, um, for BMW, um, we have a couple of, B I'll just clump them together. Uh, we have two questions. One of them may not be, may, may need to be answered by us, but um, the first question is uh, from Green Energy Consumers Alliance for uh, Subair BMW, asking when uh, you expect to have the i3s in stock. And then uh, the follow-up question was from Lloyd, he wa uh, wanted to hear more about the EV offerings from Mini Cooper, and I don't know if, if uh, BMW Subair would be the right person to ask about that. Thank you. Uh, so the first question in regards to when will we have i3s in stock, we have pre-owned i3s at the moment, and the 2020-2021 i3, which was actually the we had expected the I-3 production to end because the I-4 was coming in the next nine to 12 months. The I-3 production was actually extended a year. So you'll be able to order and customize a new I-3 uh, for the next nine months. And our first uh, batch of, of 2020, 2021 will be arriving within the next 30 to 60 days. Uh, but you can customize and build one and get exactly what you want. The question regarding the Mini Cooper and the Mini E uh, is best uh, directed towards our sister store in Boston. The uh, Mini E is going to be a car that um, I think it's 120 mile range, give or take a little bit. Uh, and um, I, I believe actually they have taken their first uh, uh, pre-orders and maybe even done their first delivery, but. Herb Chambers BMW Mini of Boston would be, of course, the uh, the best place for us to recommend asking them about the availability. All right, great. So we have another advanced question uh, from Jenny. She says, I drive around 15,000 miles a year. How much would it cost me to charge an EV? Do you, maybe Mark wants to answer that. Sure. Uh, you know me too well. I'm, I'm a real numbers guy. I love to crunch these numbers. And uh, when if you live in, in Concord, and this is true for, for many of the, the 
public utility areas that have similar uh, low expensive, low cost electricity, uh, because it's only around a dollar twenty, uh, an e gallon or a gallon equivalent of driving. It's it's going to cost less to drive on electricity, no matter how many miles you're driving. Uh, but especially if you drive a lot. So so if you drive a lot, like fifteen thousand miles a year, uh, the question was how much is it going to cost? It's it's go probably going to only add around fifty to maybe sixty dollars a month to your electric bill, uh, whereas it would be well over a hundred dollars in, in gasoline um, for virtually any car, perhaps two hundred or, or more. Uh, so. Uh, so most drivers don't drive 15,000 miles. They drive, you know, uh, 10 or, or 12 or 1,000 miles a year. So it's probably more like 30 to $40 um, on your electric bill. So really a small amount of money compared to how much is being spent on gasoline now. Great. Thank you. And also while we have you, do we have any questions coming in from the EV support mailbox or that you want to address while you're on the line? Or should I... Are you there, Mark? Okay. Uh, I'll move on to another advanced question. I think there was a quick moment with the mic. Uh, so Cynthia submitted a question about asking what EVs have over 180 miles of range but are still affordable. Uh, I can answer that one real quick too. Uh, all of our brand dealers that presented today have at least one model with over 180 miles of range and many of them are under $30,000 after incentives and used EVs can be even less. So, hopefully, and if you have any further questions, you can always follow up with us in our EV support um, email, ev at e &E .org. Uh, Alex, do we have any oh, other? Actually, Kayla, we do have a question oh, in the mailbox, okay, and it's, it's another question for the, the BMW brand dealer that's here. Um, the question is, will BMW be bringing the i4, which I believe is the all-electric car, uh, and, and that uh, was mentioned. Uh, will they be bringing the I-4 to the U.S. soon? What will what will be um, the expected date on that? Thank you. Yeah, the answer is definitely yes. There's been no official launch date, but communications from the manufacturer to the dealerships have indicated somewhere in the third quarter of 2021 is when we should expect to see it. Um, sadly, with the uh, COVID environment, we've kind of lost a lot of uh, direct customer interactions through automobile shows. Uh, so we don't have uh, the New York show, the Detroit show, the LA show, and in Europe, the Frankfurt show. Um, a lot of times that's where we might get a little more information on when we could expect to see those models. So we're really relying on the manufacturer to give us that information. Uh, if I could, I would like to just backtrack one second. Uh, regarding the question about cost of charging and cost of driving 15,000 miles per year. One of the things we've discovered with a lot of our I3 customers is they tend to be pretty savvy about where you can get free charging. And I don't know if there's anyone else who would like to just kind of emphasize a lot of your customer uh, uh, interaction locations like a Whole Foods, Stop and Shop, Natick Mall, uh, in Massachusetts, a lot of the charge point next workstations are still free to consumers. Uh, you can go to a 99 restaurant. Uh, you can go to a, a stop and shop, for example, here in Sudbury, where they have, I think, eight stations still. Whole Foods down the street from us in Sudbury has one location. Uh, and a lot of those um, stations are no cost. I actually live in Marlboro, where there are two DC fast charging stations. And one of them, which is a charge point station right next to the Hannaford's across from the Apex Center is also free. And I've run into uh, some Bolt and uh, some Leaf customers over there because it's a dual station with both the uh, Chadmo charger and the uh, DC combo charger as well. So just to kind of backtrack a second on that one, I wanted to make sure you could actually get away with free charging in a lot of locations. Pranav, you've you've ruined it for me. You've given away my best kept secret. Uh, yes. There is there is lots of there is lots of free charging around right now. That is absolutely true. That was a great point. I really appreciate you bringing that up. Uh, it's it's just another one of the one of the extra benefits that you can find 
that uh, if you shop at a place like Whole Foods, they're going to give you, they might give you some free charging in exchange for you parking and shopping there. It's fantastic. Um, and uh, like many of the other dealers, our charging stations are also no cost to our customers. Great. Great. Um, thank you. Uh, Salsa. Yes. One, we all see that um, Guy actually has his hand up in the in the conversation, yeah. but I also have a couple of Nissan questions I'd like to relay towards Guy as well. Um, well, go ahead. Sure. Uh, I was just going to uh, offer, I, I don't think it's been mentioned yet, but quick way that people can always tell uh, where is the free charging is the plug share app um, that is free to download on both uh, iPhone or Android. And it's crowdsourced, so it's probably the single best uh, consolidated map um, of wherever you are. It goes across the United States into Canada and probably into Mexico, but uh, certainly greater New England. Um, and you'll be able to tell quickly which is the you know, top speed charging, the, the supercharger or quick charger or the, you know, the Chatamo or the CCS version quick chargers or the standard rate and click on it. Um, you'll tell quickly whether it's free or not. Um, whether it's online or down for service or that sort of thing. Um, and then I also just wanted to touch base that the S plus, so the least expensive longest range leaf is, um, it, it is rated at 226 EPA miles of range, pure electric range. And after the circa, uh, what is it, $18,000, total in savings, that works out to around $21,000 um, for the car that can go well over 200 miles pure electric range. So that's, we have those um, and, um, and can be a great choice. Perfect. And then Guy, just a couple of Nissan specific questions. I'll try and lump them in so, so that we can sort of cover them. Um, but uh, one question from Carol. Carol, in sort of like a, there's two that I'll kind of combine, but one question is, is the Nissan Leaf all-wheel drive, front-wheel drive, or rear-wheel drive? Front-wheel drive. Yep, the motor's in the front, um, drive wheels are in the front. Uh, it's an excellent front-wheel drive car in the snow. Uh, I grew up in New England. Uh, I learned on a rear-wheel drive car um, uh, with no snow tires back in the day. And um, so it's a good front-wheel drive car. Um, like, you know, before all-wheel drives became sort of the de rigueur, seemingly in the last few years, front-wheel drive was considered, you know, a no-brainer. If you get into trouble with a front-wheel drive car, you shouldn't be driving, sort of thing. Um, and that's the lead. Sure. And then uh, the follow-up to that, um, are there any significant updates for the 2021 version of the Nissan Leaf compared to the 2020? And just to combine that with another question, has there been a recent change in the charging system of the Nissan that Nissan uses? The, there are no um, updates for 21 that have been released that I'm aware of. The, the 2020 saw several updates. Um, the, the increase in the the airbags, the telescoping steering wheel um, that a lot of people are waiting for, um, the rear emergency braking, the standard blind spot. Um, 21 is supposed to be um, very similar as best I know. Um, and then uh, Nissan will be broadening out to include the, the American version uh, combined charging standard, the CCS um, standard for the uh, highest voltage quick quick charge uh, interface, um, but they'll keep the Leaf in production, and that'll, as far as I know, continue to be the Chatamo. Um, one one last quality about the the modern Chatamo connection is it's, I believe, it's still the only bi-directional connection. So there are there are multiple companies now that allow you to plug your car into your home, basically use your car as sort of a mobile power wall uh, resource in case the power goes out. So that's something that will probably be more and more common as, as we go forward. Perfect, and that answered another question right there. Uh, perfect, thanks, Guy. Kayla, sending it back to you. 
All right, thanks, Alex. Um, so we have another question that was sent in advance. It's kind of related to all the charging, but someone was asking about not wanting to have to drive somewhere other than home to plug in and wait for the charge and go back and retrieve it. They want to just be able to go home, plug in and not think about it until they're heading out again for the next day or whenever. So if anybody just wants to briefly address that, maybe Alex or Mark. Sure. Uh, yeah, I could say a few things about that. And that's one of the things that you really uh, learn and and find is really beneficial when you first get when you get your first electric car because the good news is that that most of your charging is already easily done at home overnight while you sleep and the car is back to full so you're not really needing to charge that much out and about unless unless you want to unless it's convenient for you um and you're also going to save money because of the incentives that we talked about whether you're charging at home or, or finding uh free charging somewhere um, so most of that charging is happening at home already so you're not really waiting when you're charging it at home, you're charging it overnight. Um, but back to the first part of the question, also because uh, most of the electric cars have fast charging capability, uh, the public charge time is usually measured in minutes, not hours. Uh, so you can do it locally while you're shopping or dining if you're using a fast charging station. Or if you're on a long trip, you can do it during a rest stop break. So there's not really much waiting involved in those, those type of charging situations. But if someone is really adverse to charging away from home, then there still are two options that you can go electric with anyhow. You can get an all electric as your primary daily driver and then use a, your, a second gasoline or hybrid car for those occasional long trips. Or you can just get one of the many plug-in hybrid electric vehicles and that will meet your driving needs in just one vehicle, um, give you mostly electric driving and you'll only be charging it at home overnight. Great, thank you, Mark. Um, does are there any live questions that maybe Alex also wants to address or bring up? Sure. Or sorry, should we cover another? Uh, yeah, I can. Okay. I can do another question. Um, so for for um, for Hyundai specific, uh, we have a question from Carol asking if Hyundai or Kia have all-wheel drive vehicles or or possibly will there be future all-wheel drive vehicles um, on the Hyundai Kia lineup, specifically Hyundai, because we have you, John. Uh, sure, uh, not currently and 100% in the future. So the Genesis EV will 100% be all-wheel drive as will several of the Hyundai Ionic uh, models as they continue to expand that brand. Um, I would say probably have two to three between Hyundai and Genesis available on our lots around this time next year. I, I don't expect it uh, in the next six months, but I do expect it in the next 12 months. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we have another question that was submitted in advance. Uh, asking which plug-in electric models have all-wheel drive. I know we've kind of touched on some of the sort of all-wheel, front-wheel, rear-wheel, but just if anybody wants to specifically address all-wheel drive for plug-in electric models, maybe Alex or Mark or someone. Uh, I can take that. Yeah, sorry. I'm just trying to mute and unmute myself here. Um, so there are there are... A lot of models that do have plug-in or that that do have all-wheel drive currently, um, and several of them are presented here, and then several several of them were on raised list that that um, that are at various dealerships throughout the state, um, and then also there are models coming out. So uh, the best answer we can give at this point is our our EV support service is really designed to help find the best car that fits uh, your needs, uh, you the customer, and then we can communicate we can get you to the dealerships and the um, right, right models that that sort of fit your needs, fit what you're looking for. Whether it's a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle or a full battery electric vehicle, what's the range? What's the model? Um, sort of keep 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 to your brand loyalty. So um, the there there are enough models with all-wheel drive that that the best answer is come to us. We'll help figure out what the best best models to fit you uh, fit your needs are. Because a lot of those models also come in in several different styles. Some with rear wheel and then all wheel, or front wheel and then all wheel. Um, so yeah, thanks, Kayla. Sure. And, um, 
also want to give you a chance while you're unmuted. Are there any other YouTube specific questions you want to direct towards anyone? Sure. Um, I had, I saw that Brian, uh, sort of address this, but um, Brian, if you if you would feel comfortable, there was a question about the Tesla Model 3 performance, but how, how the Tesla all-wheel drive system does um, in the winter. Hi. Um, so I, I've heard great things about the all-wheel drive. Both of my cars were rather early, so both of my cars are rear wheel, and um, they drive like rails on the snow. I mean, they, they really do they're such heavy cars. They really cut down to the pavement and uh, there's not a lot of slipping. And when I do go through um, like mounds or things like that of snow where there might be some ice underneath, um, Tesla has a software change, which is called chill mode. So you put on chill mode and essentially it changes the throttle control such that the tires don't slip. It's a, it's a little bit more sluggish. It doesn't have that launch like you would in the summer to go, you know, screaming down the road, but it, uh, it allows you to get better traction. Does that answer that? Yeah, that, that, that's a great answer. Thank you. Um, and then, Kayla, do All you right. have another question? I have a couple more, too, on YouTube before we call it. Um, yes, I have another question or so, but if you Perfect. want to get any out of the way, you can right now. Um, there's one question sort of to follow up with Brian's, uh, from, um, from Luke, Luke on, on the YouTube that asked what kind of, uh, mileage hit do the cars typically take when driving in the cold, um, assuming that you use heat, uh, to some degree. So, um, I think the best answer is just like a regular, uh, gas driven car, our mileage always takes hits in the winter when it's colder, um, and it takes more energy to move the car. Um, and especially when you turn your heat on. So the, the difference basically comes down to, does the car have a heat? Does the electric car have um, battery heating? And is it charging? Do you start charging your, or um, heating your car while it's plugged in before leaving home? Um, and, and sort of the average losses can be between 10% or uh, like 40%. And again, if you're blasting your heat, driving 80 miles an hour on the highway when it's super cold, you actually see a pretty similar decline um, on gas cars as well. So um, hopefully that answers your question, Luke. Thanks, Caleb. Sure. Um, another question we had set in advance from a few people, really, in general, was the sort of common theme of they currently have no power to their for charging options of their parking spaces at their condo or apartment, and sort of asking whether or not they can have their parking spot wired for their individual meter so they can get an electric car or sort of what options are available for this sort of transition to electric vehicles. I don't know if maybe Mark wants to sort of briefly address some of these concerns. Uh, sure, sure. The, the short answer with getting uh, wiring to your particular parking spot, if you live in a condominium or apartment, is it depends. It may be possible, based on the design of your, con your building, to actually tie your own electrical service into where you're parking. Uh, oftentimes, though, it is required to connect the building's common service to that, and then there needs to be a solution worked out as to as to how that's uh, metered. Uh, Concord has actually been working with a program called EV Ready that they developed on these solutions directly with multi-unit dwelling owners and property owners. Uh, so I encourage I encourage you, if if that is you, either a, a resident or property owner. Uh, contact our EV support uh, to get more info about the EV Ready program and some other options, and we can give you assistance on your particular parking and charging situation. Great. Thank you, Mark. Um, are there any other pressing sort of YouTube questions that maybe Alex wants to address, or we don't, we don't really have that many more other than like? One more advanced question. So yeah, um, we're we're coming a little close to the end, and I don't want to hold everyone here for too too cool. much longer. And so I think um, there are th th there's one question that sort of asks what the warranties for every specific uh, what what the specific brand loyalties are. The warranties are because um, for Toyota, there they heard there's a ten year, hundred thousand mile uh, warranty, and I think the best thing to do would be to reach out to us on our um, 
on our EV mailbox, and then we can send you to those specific dealers and, and the folks that have presented today and their contacts and EV specialists um, who can help you for the brands you're looking for um, so that we sort of save time on that, um, if that if that works. Yeah, yeah because, because the, you know, the, there are different top-end warranties. Some of, some of the uh, brands and models have an additional warranty that's, that's higher than others, but there is, there is that eight-year, I think someone mentioned the eight-year, 100,000-mile standard warranty that every single plug-in electric vehicle uh, will carry by, uh, by law. So that's, that's a good start. Great. Um, and one sort of final quick advanced question that we received was just inquiring about whether electric vehicles will ever be able to provide power from their batteries to the home during a power outage. Um, maybe Mark or Alex wanted to just cover that briefly. Or... Sorry, I, I can cover that and actually... Um, so, so Guy had mentioned earlier, right now the Nissan Leaf is one of the few, one of the only models right now that has what we call vehicle to grid, uh, being able to plug your car back into the grid or even just to, to your house and, and, and it can has, has bi-directional current um, that sends energy back in your house and you can sort of power the house or power, power something um, when there's power is out basically. You use your car battery as, as, a, as a form of keeping, keeping things lit. Um, but the technology is still very young. Um, actually, I wanted to see, actually, the Concord is currently um, looking at, they have a, an electric bus and they're looking at future buses with vehicle to grid. And Brian, would you, would you be interested in chatting about that really quick? Or is that a topic for another time? Oh, that's a, that's a big topic. And uh, I apologize, but I was typing in the chat, so I was half paying attention. Not a problem. Uh, but you're, you're talking about vehicle to grid? Yeah, basically sort of the technology, just in sort of summarize sure. what the technology behind it. Yeah, so uh, what Concord is doing is we've got our school, school bus depot uh, right next to our, our Concord Lights um, five and a half megawatt solar array. And we're, the buses, while they're parked, can charge or discharge energy into the grid depending on the grid's need, whether it's um, we're having a summer peak, we w may want the buses to discharge so that we can run our air conditioners and not pay um, quite a lot of money for those peak costs of electricity when everyone in New England wants electricity. Uh, and conversely, when we have in the spring and the fall, we have those Sundays where there's very low demand for electricity. Um, we can fill up those vehicles with electricity um, because we have that excess solar in town, uh, which allows us to put more solar in town because we have places to put it without curtailment. Um, and there's, there's other things that's vehicle to grid where you're trying to reduce the expenses of the light plant with the idle vehicle there is also vehicle to building, which is where you look at the demand for a building and you can manage the charging of the school bus uh, to lower the expenses for that particular um, electric customer. So whether it's managing demand charges, <clears throat> excuse me, demand charges for a commercial building or whether it's um, using a time of use rate to um, get a credit uh, when the light plant needs energy and then um, buying that energy at a, at a lower time. And there's also, um, which was my question to Guy, which was about um, backup power using the LEAF. Um, I know that's been going on in, in Japan with a couple of those, those LEAFs, and uh, it's quite interesting because I have two electric cars here with many kilowatt hours at my disposal, but yet I, if the power goes out, I can't switch my building over to run on them. Um, which would be a very interesting uh, proposition because it gives you resilience. So there's a, there's a lot of aspects to that. Like I said, it's a huge topic, um, but very interesting and, and hopefully coming to Concord uh, in the next few years. Looks like we have a hand up from one of our presenters, uh, Pranav Gill from uh, BMW of Sudbury, who uh, had a question. I was just going to make a quick comment. The, I just wanted to make sure for clarity purposes, the eight year, 100,000 mile warranty that a lot of folks talk about is on the high voltage battery only. And uh, some of the other presenters can talk about the individual brands. For example, BMW's new car warranty is four years 
50,000 miles. That's the same on all of our uh, hybrid and electric and gasoline powered vehicles. What is different is that high voltage battery additional warranty for the eight year 100,000 mile period. And I just wanted to see if any other of the presenters wanted to give what their warranties were for their vehicles as well. All right, well, thank you. Um, I know we're running kind of on the long, a uh, little bit over time here. So I think I'm gonna close up any questions and any follow-up questions can be directed to our support line uh, through ev at e .org. Um, If anybody has any final comments from our EV specialist team to close out, I'll hand it over to you. Great job, Kayla. Thank you all for the, to the, all the presenters and participants for joining us today. We look forward to next time. Absolutely, thank you. Thank you. Thank you everyone. And again, if you have any questions, um, our EV support line is there and you can comment on this YouTube video, send us an email and we can get you in touch with the EV specialists from the different brands that spoke today. Um, again, thank you so much to everyone, the dealerships, those attending, and uh, have a wonderful night, everyone. Thank you again. Great. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Mark.